my shorts ripped when I went swimming. It isn't much of a story, but, you know, if we're scraping the barrel and my whole ass was out in the pool, I had to sort of scrunch up my shorts so it was covered a bit and then walk out backwards, pretty much. Welcome to Drum and Drummer, a podcast focused on drums, drumming and drummers. I'm George Pickering and that's Ben Winty and we are both professional drummers in this business we call music. So stick around and join us as we pass the time whilst trying to stay in time. I'm such a fucking nerd. God, I was sweaty last night. I'm even washing my pillows. Welcome to Drum and Drummer. Exactly. (laughs) Last cough. Get the last cough out before we start. Good. How are you? Okay. Yeah? Yeah, I'm all right, mate. Yeah. Yeah? It's weird, isn't it? Because there's a World Cup soon. Yeah. <laughs> As is there, know. um, when are the England games? Are they, aren't they playing... Monday. The US at some point. Yeah. The US of A. Yeah. Yeah, and I've got no other plans. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, something rattled then when I but laughed. The first game, though, is I Monday. Laughed. Yeah. Next week, 1 p.m., and you go, this is why I'm self-employed. Yeah, exactly. Because, yep, yeah, I'm watching that. Yep. Absolutely. Thank no problem. Much. I'm yeah. Watch England play out a boring nil-nil draw with Iran. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely exactly. stuff. No, I'm um, excited. Do you know what I'm going to try and do this week? I didn't tell you it. I'm going to try and be more sprightly. Because last week, <laughs> I listened back to our episode, and I was like, fucking hell, are you going to wake up, George? So... Expect a sprightly performance today. Not to hype it up before it goes anywhere, but um, yeah. I'm all up for that. Yeah, I'm all up for that. Woo! <laughs> um, What's that? What? what do you do? You're just like a, a whelping puppy. <laughs> <laughs> That's all okay, I got. Yeah, bit of life. Yeah. yeah World life. Cup, though, it's different, isn't it? Because A, it's winter, and B, a mm, bit political, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it so the buzz ain't there yet. There's no buzz. No. There's no buzz. Well, it'll be interesting in the pubs because in the pubs at winter, everyone starts, people that aren't drinkers go to pubs. You know, in December, it's like all oh, Christmas drinks and all that. So it'll be weird to have that mix because the pubs are always busy. Anyway. Watching Ghana versus Peru. Yeah. You know, <laughs> lovely stuff. What a culture yeah. of worlds. Yeah. Um, so I'm sort of, I'm not quite there with World Cup buzz. I, do, no. I prefer England playing in tournaments than league, you know. Yeah. First got into it. You're in 96. That was my first. Yeah. Football Mine was early. World Cup 2002. Ah, so I had the wall chart and everything. Yeah. It was very exciting. That was a good one because the matches were on really early. Yeah. Like 8am, Bosch. Yeah. And then watch well, the matches and then... Because, yeah, it was still term time and we used to watch it at school before school started. It was really yeah. weird. It was yeah. like, if you want to watch the football, come in at six yeah, and then watch the game and then start lessons, which was odd, but fun. You know yeah. what I mean? Wheel I mean, the telly in. Cup, this World Cup, some days, mate, I had a look. It's four games a day. That's insane. Yeah. I think it's like 10 a.m., one, four, and seven. Yeah. It's like, yeah, well, I'll just book some time out. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to one day watch them all. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. rather than just watch some of the highlights, just go, right, I'm going to watch every single game of this tournament and I'm going to really keep up to date with the wall chart and all that stuff. But um, no, I'm not buzzed about it yet. But no. maybe well, it's also... I tried to get you in the sweepstake, but <laughs> yeah, it's not even in it. I don't even know. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, maybe it's also because we had the Euros last year. Yeah. So it's like we yeah. feel like we've just... Because I've got this, I got this theory right about Christmas. Christmas is just a far away enough from the last Christmas that it's fun. Do you know what I mean? Like if it, if you a had Christmas, yeah, a year. Yeah. If you had yeah. Christmas every three months, you'd be like, oh, should we even bother this time? Like, or should we just wait? You know. But if you had it every four years, like the Olympics, you'd be like, what do we do again? Do we get a tree? What What do you eat? You know, like you don't right. quite. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas a year. Perfect time. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like football tournaments are the same. Like the World Cup being four years and same, you know, you're like, oh, yeah, see, here we go. Here we go. This yeah. is it. But maybe you're right, like, we oh. did have the Euros last year. Yeah, we just had one. 
Um, but, um, I'm not even sure who's in it this year. England, USA. England, USA, Iran. Wales. Yeah. I remember watching England-Wales in Euro 2016 mm-hmm. in a pub in London. We had a decade gig. And we sound checked, then went to a pub, watched the game, met up with mate Andy. And when England scored the winner, I think it was Daniel Sturridge, in like the last minute or something, uh, I punched Neil in the tit in celebration. Uh, oh, okay. Just, just hard? I mean, enough to him to be like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. But He's quite a weak little man, though. So, you know. Yeah, like the. <laughs> Um, I don't really mean that strength of like a cereal box, like folded <laughs> together. It's it, it well, holds Neil, cereal. Neil has the strength of a cereal box, but get it wet, it's useless. Yeah, uh, very easy to fold. Yeah. yeah, one little tear, it falls apart. Yeah, <laughs> so there physically we go. and emotionally. So, yeah. how are you, George? Yeah, good. Mental weekend. I um. Where's the sprightliness? Come on. I know. I know it? what. Uh, okay, so I this crew job. Remember the old crew job? Yeah, big time. Uh, I was working Saturday for Australian Pink Floyd. Of course. Apparently, only one of them is Australian, though. So I don't even know if you can call yourself Australian. But um, so I did the morning shift, which is about eight a.m. till midday, and then I did the evening shift, ten p.m. till like one in the morning. Got home. Sunday at a gig, that was fine. That that's fine. That's fine. You know, Sunday I could sleep in. This is where it gets mental. So, Sunday I had a gig with Dean Chloellen's '80s band at a pub in Brighton. Dino, um, Dino, uh, Dino, Dino. Um, it was a fun gig. It was a fun gig. There was there was some fucking some guy who he was a bit. He was trying to play the keys. While the keys player was playing, you yeah. know, and then at the end he Sounds tried like a to. Great oh, guy. Yeah, and at the end he did that classic, like, "Oh mate, can I just say some stuff on the mic?" Oh, and he didn't even know. really ask; he just went to the mic, and I, I just from behind my kit got up and like pushed him, and he looked around at me as if like I was in the wrong. I was like, "What are you doing?" And then I just sort of, you know, this is obviously just audio, so you can't see what I'm doing, but I sort of waved him Flap off. In the hand, you, you Flap in the hand, hand yeah, in front. Uh, with the flat hand, fingers extended, bunched exactly. together, uh, wafting. Wafting. You're, you're wafting the man off the stage. I was wafting the man away, and it looked very posh and ridiculous, but it did the job. But he was, he was, he was like, I just want to, I just want to, just want to say some stuff. What do you want to say? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I was talking to some mates about it at the gig, and I was saying like, because they were like, oh, that guy is really annoying, and I was like, do you know what it is? It's just people see us getting attention. And they're like, how do I get, you know, that's one aspect of it. Another aspect is they're pissed and a bit of a cunt. But like yeah. the main aspect is they're like. You weren't hugged enough as a child. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Loved. Yeah. Don't take childhood issues out on us as a band, you know. <laughs> I'm sick of saying it. Um, so anyway, I did that gig. I got in about one, about half one. one. Yeah. And yeah. one. Uh, one. I, and then I knew I had to wake up at quarter to six. That's for early. work so I was like I, I I relaxed to it do you know what I mean I went I know I'm not going to get any sleep see what I can get sleep wise don't worry about it you know you're going to be tired tomorrow just just go to bed and I know I didn't get to sleep till like half two so I must have got like three hours sleep woke up shower a bagel go on you got a question yeah so what time are you working uh, I was working at 7 a.m. and I walked there. And it's like so a 40 you got minute up walk. At what time? I got up at quarter to six, which gave me about half an hour to get ready. And then 45 minutes to get there. Yeah, 40 minute walk okay. to the Brighton Centre. So I get there about 7 a.m. Don't really know where I am or what's going on because I'm so tired. Uh, and it was Kaiser Chiefs that day. So, and they were being supported by the Fratellis and the Sherlocks. So it was like four trucks. It's a lot of trucks for a gig. That's a little industry secret there. There's four trucks. It's a big gig. And uh, usually they just have two. One truck. Not as much stuff. No. (laughs) You'll never get it where you have ten trucks and they just put, you know, a little bit in each. They pack those boys to the rafters. Mm, Well, Um, fuel prices. 
Yeah, exactly. Tell it's me. like Tetris. So anyway, did that, finished at midday, went home, tried to have a nap, couldn't even have a nap, went back to work last night at 10 or something like that. And oh, by the way, I had work in the day as well. This new job I got, it's like, I'm basically Jack Black, you know, in School of Rock. I've got, a, you know, it's at Brighton Youth Centre, working with young people, putting a band together, that kind of stuff. He is checked. I am. I am DBS checked. Which proves I'm not a pedo. Uh, I've got it written down. So <laughs> come at me with your accusations. Yeah. I've got a yeah. Certificate. Yeah. To prove it. Yeah. yeah. So. It expired in 2006, but it's not important. <laughs> 2006. I would have been 10. <laughs> uh, really young pedo. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. It didn't finish until like two in the morning. And by that point, I didn't know where I was. It was just, it was. It was ridiculous, and I worked Probably, out. I uh, walked the Brighton Centre, though, weren't you? Yeah, well, yeah. 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 But you know, when you're like, you're so tired, you're like, I don't know if this is safe. You know, when you're like moving light cases, and then I walked home. I worked out. I walked. George, nine can miles. you get out of the driver's seat, please, mate? You're not driving the trucks <laughs> yeah. today. Yeah. Just trying to get on the Kai's chief drums while they're setting it down. <laughs> no, I'm the drummer. I do. Just... I predict right all the time. <laughs> yeah. There's a cappella, I predict a riot in my pants on the stage. They're like, who is this guy? Who is him? He's great. Yeah. I'm going to bring him on tour with us. <laughs> Do you know, it's probably how, yeah, you're, uh, if you're mad enough for the Kai's Chiefs, because, segue, did you hear about the other night, Ricky Wilson, the singer of the Kai's Chiefs, got just slammed. For, he was so pissed at the O2. And uh, people, a lot of people complained. So... Last night, it was a lot what, of people... while they were playing? Yeah, while they were playing, and he was slurring and forgot words and stuff, and, like, a lot of people left early. And then last night, I did notice people were leaving early. I was like, I wonder if it's happened again. But anyway, just a long, long couple of days. But it was it was those... You know when you... You know this. We all know this as self-employed musicians, or anyone, really, that takes on a lot of stuff. You look at, like, your week or a couple of days, you go, that's mental. How am I going to do that? We just do one thing at a time. I've been sort of having a bit of a spring clear out, mate. You have? In November. Mm. Classic time for a spring clear out. Both yep. at home and at work. Yeah. You know? Because you, once you know. start, you're like getting a little bit of the... I've got more buzz for clearing stuff out than I have for the World Cup. Yeah. At the moment. Yeah. You get on a bit of a roll, don't you? So at home, it was like, well, I'm going to, there's some, st okay, I'm looking for something. All right. Okay. Let's clear this up. To be fair, some of it was the initial clear out was sparked by the passing of Princess Bean. Right. So I had, okay, I've got some hamster stuff now that I need to put away, like the cage and lots of stuff. And it's like, maybe I will sell it on or, mm. you know, but it's like, right, well, I want to be able to put this in the cupboard, but there's not really a lot of room. So let's. Have a sort out. Yeah. And you just get in a good flow, stick some headphones in, get a potty on. Mm. Uh, not this one. Oh, <laughs> no. Uh, actually, I put a good one on. <laughs> and uh, and then you're like, bang, 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 bang. And then you just get into a flow. And six hours later, you know, I've cleared out seven bin liners. Yeah. Worth of stuff. Stuff for recycling, stuff for binning, stuff for the tip, stuff for reselling. Mm. And you're like, oh, this feels really good. And you yeah. clean as you go. And you're like, oh, I've just... And it's still all kind of hidden in cupboards, but you mm. just feel a bit better. Yeah. A bit of a cleanse. It is cleansing. And I've brought that with me to work. A few years ago, we did build a new recording facilities, and there was a lot of gear that we kept, but didn't don't use. Mm. And I was like, and actually a few years ago when I did it, I signed lined a pile of stuff. I was like, oh, I could sell this at some point, even mm. took pictures, then just never did anything about it because I was just busy. Yeah. And now it's like, now I've got that little clearing out bug. Mm. Um, but not that's that's for clearing stuff from me. It's not a sort of intestinal disease. No, it's not an um, actual bug, yeah. Not clearing my insides out. Yeah. You know. Um, you don't need a colostomy bag. No. No. Um, thank God. Thank God, oh, yeah. It'd be weird drumming with one of them, wouldn't it? Did you say what? You couldn't it'd drum. It'd be weird drumming with one of them. Yeah. I feel like it'd be hard doing a lot of things. Yeah. Anyway, so it's like, right, let's finally sort out all this stuff. I had a big 
is like a kind of cupboard of everyone's got a drawer or a cupboard of horror mm. in their room or their mm. house where yeah, that's where you just put stuff yep right and it's hidden you can deal with that later everyone's got a messy drawer messy cupboard. messy drawer yep and at the studio no exception there's a sort of messy cupboard upstairs just shove it all in there so i got josh to sort through it all yeah and uh he did a very good job and it's like oh there's loads of stuff in here that could be sold Mm. loads of stuff loads of cables that could be useful there's loads of stuff that can go to the tip and it's like oh i've got guitar cabs bass Mm. cabs bass amp all this stuff can be sold i've got loads of studio hardware microphones and i was like right let's let's do this let's get this stuff photographed and let's Mm. try and flog it Mm. you know and i'm not looking for huge amounts of money i just want to get rid um so that's a bit that's the thing in it if you want to do it properly Mm. it takes time yeah like if you're listing stuff on ebay the better the pictures the better the listing the quality of your description and info the more chance you've got of selling it and with some stuff because a lot of it's electrical i've got to test it all and do that and a lot of stuff doesn't have the box or the manual but some stuff so i've been actually yeah doing quite a lot of that i've already shifted some stuff um but yeah, got some things for sale. If anyone is wants. this, yeah, well, you know, shout out on here. Got like some microphones and bass cabs, guitar cab, yeah, um, some studio outboard gear, yeah. You know, some of it's on eBay, some of it's on the studio social media. Um, so if you, you know. need any of that, get in touch. Yeah, Should what's what's mental though is is like how much there is. Yeah, like, oh, there's actually there's actually shitloads here that yeah. is perfectly working. Mm. and you know we don't need that would would benefit someone someone yeah. could, could get use out of it you know so i've been doing a lot of that I've been is, doing a lot of that. is i'll say two things it's funny first of all how yeah when you do start clearing stuff out like i did it with my clothes the other day and i was going for all the clothes i just don't wear and also i thought do you know what i'm gonna get rid of all my black shirts because i basically live in black shirts and you're a very monochrome man i am and I, I i don't like it but the thing is it's like i never make any effort to not wear that do you know what i mean i go right there's a black shirt cool that that will do my t-shirts in my wardrobe i'd go as far as to say um 80 of them are black yeah and then there's 15 percent gray yeah and then a few blues but this is the thing but once I got rid of them, I haven't sold them yet. They're just in bags. I now just have a selection of like eight shirts in my wardrobe and I just wear them now. And I'm like, oh, this is enough. And I'm not yeah. wearing black yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah. And I'll say another thing about getting rid of stuff. Coming out from a different angle, isn't it nice when you're going through stuff and you just, you know, get that in a bag, get that in the bin? I had this little thought the other day. I go, God, thank God I'm not a hoarder. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, isn't it nice that you can just go, I don't use that, that's in the bin. You know what I mean? Rather than, because there's some people that go, I don't use that, but let's keep it. And then let's have piles of newspaper yeah. in my living room and then never be able to leave the house. You well, know? There's definitely an element of, I think some sometimes when you have a clear out, you have to be quite brutal. You do. And you have to go, this is going to be a brutal clear out. Yeah. And I've always been quite good at doing that. Yeah. And they'd be like, yeah, I ain't used that for a year. I yep. don't need it. I don't want it. Yep. Get rid of it. Yeah. Right. I'm gonna move move the conversation on. Connor Griffiths messaged us the other day. Big Connor time. Griffiths, friend of the show, friend of us. I'll tell you what he said. Got it right here. Hey lads, just listened to the recent pod driving back from a rehearsal. Smashed it as always. That's nice, isn't it? That's very kind of you, Connor. That is kind. After hearing about the hardware bag, I thought I'd let you no, what well, I actually keep in it. Uh, this contra- is last week. Yeah. You did a gig with Connor <laughs> and he turned up with his hardware bag. Yeah, he did. And I guess our, my assumption was, because I said, oh, I like to bring my hardware when yeah. using a shared gig kit. But Connor's corrected us. He has, yeah. Corrected me. Well, us. Pray, do uh, read on. He said, uh, Pray, do tell. <clears throat> contrary to popular belief, not hardware. What? For show. Yeah, I dun, know. Dun, dun. Yeah. Um, for shows with just breakables, I can fit all breakables, snare, sticks, SPD and stand, kick pedal, cabling for in-ears and SPD and a drum stall. 
in that case, <laughs> I read that wrong. Sorry, he means literally in the case. I, I thought he was saying it like oh, the turn of phrase. <laughs> in that case. <laughs> okay, let's, let's, in that case. So I just have to carry that brackets, which has wheels and my symbols. So let's go through that again. So in this bag, breakables, snare, sticks, SPD and stand, kick pedal, cabling for in-ears, and SPD and a drum stool. So he's not actually taking any, yeah, hardware. So he's not just taking any. Stool. And then he's yeah, he's not taking like so he's basically just things. he's rocking up two bags. Yeah, Johnny two bags. He said absolute symbols get and a yep. big bag which has everything else in. Yeah, and I like that. I like that. It's cl I've never thought of that before because it um, is awkward carrying your symbols, kick pedal, and your snare. Yeah, it is like at a festival or something. Yeah, because it's shoulder symbols usually on the shoulder, mm. and then your both hands are full. I usually go carrying a minute. I have snare around my like over my shoulder, drag the cymbals while they're on wheels. I'm not just dragging it. Uh yeah, and then hold the kick pedal. But then even like stick back. Sometimes you find you've got too much round your neck and you're just, you know, mm. hanging yourself. Uh absolute game changer for festivals or city gigs where you can't get right outside the venue. Also, sorry, George Defo won't make the joiners gig. I'm playing on Shrek the musical, musical drums, not Shrek. So he did send pictures as well, and may as well put it on the Instagram. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's just what a, what, a, what a great idea, you know? Yeah, just have it all in one bag. I think I've never thought of that because it's just like when they say breakables, I wouldn't look at my bag with all my metal in it and go, oh, I'll take all that out. And then put these yeah. things in there. Well, you've got but quite a small bag anyway. For... We've got, it looks like, Connor, what? My breakables bag. Yeah. It looks like we've got the same, Connor and I. So, but yeah, it is. I mean, it's small compared to yours. If I have to take an electric kit, I will take my <clears> hardware out of my box and I'll put everything in the yeah. box. Yeah. So then I'm basically just got a hardware case and the rack. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. And maybe yeah. I think my kick drum pedal case, I'll then put things like sticks and power supply and yeah. little stuff in that. Yeah. Sometimes do that, but yeah. Well, thanks yeah. for letting us know, Connor. There we yes, go. Yes, thank you for that, Connor. And good luck with the Shrek musical. Uh, right. Something else drum related that I want to talk about. Have you heard of the chopper symbol? No, I have not. No, nor had I. Shall I explain what Get it is? to the chopper. Yeah, that's what it is. You hit it, and it's an Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> voice. Um, the chopper symbol. So what it is is, well, I'll read how it's described: an innovative multi-application percussion effect that delivers quick, tightly focused white noise accents and rhythms. And then it's kind of the way it looks is sort of like a stack. So a symbol stack is, you know. People usually make them themselves, so they'll have like two or three symbols that they don't really use or are old or whatever. And they'll be like, right, I'll put all three together really close. And then, you know, they make a stack. So, they, But this comes fully formed. And uh, yeah, it basically, it says it produces a trashy, dirty sound, which can be used as a white noise effect. Ideal as an effect symbol... And it, it kind of, it just sounds like it has no, what's the point word? To what? <laughs> point to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it has no, like, you know, you hit a symbol and it rings out. There's no ringing it's out. No and sustain. I think, no sustain. And when I you can imagine what it sounds like. Yeah. Imagine it's like. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much that. <laughs> sort of like a, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But they look cool, but I don't know if they're a new... I feel like they're a new thing. Sabian, yeah? yeah? Yeah. Well, that's... I wouldn't be surprised if more people make them now, but Sabian definitely make them. Well, the one I'm looking at is the Sabian 10-inch chopper disc. Yeah. Big time. But I think it's that... I feel like you play it not instead of the snare, but you know, like, if you want, like, a clap sample, like, it's that sort of effect. Well, that's the way the drummer I saw playing it. Who did you see it. playing it? I just found some like oh. video oh. online. I uh -huh. thought you saw someone live. Like, no, no, God, no. But I found out about it through Pat Garvey because 
had a lesson the other day and he was telling me about his kit setup. He was like, oh, it's he has this, you know, big, big old drum kit. And uh, he was like, oh, it's not finished yet. He was like, you know, I need to put symbols on there. It's like I've got a chopper symbol. And I was like, what's that? And uh, oh, yeah. I know. yeah, I know. I did feel like he was going to be like, well, you should know. Why are you here? But it's, it's funny, isn't it? What what other what other things do we not know about? We're running a fucking drum podcast. And, yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot like so, how to play drums. Yep. Um, I mean, you know, effects symbols in general, isn't it? Mm. Like I have a china. Yeah. Do I use it for weddings? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Do I use it? I used it for auction thief. Yep. And I'd have it clamped on like a symbol arm that would clamp onto my crash on my right stand. And then just sort of stick out and it'd be far on my far right, kind of almost vertical. Yeah. Um, there's, I mean, I'd still call it an effect symbol, but the splash. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's the little cheeky splash. 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 There's that like classic. mega bell thing in there. Like it's yeah. Engine. It's got that like, it's just basically a big bell. Yeah. It's like a big ride symbol bell, but with no other bits of the symbol. Yeah. Um, some people do that thing. Have you seen that thing where people like have their crash and then on, they put a felt on it and then they put another sim uh, like a splash upside down yeah or something yeah and then put the top of the stand on yeah don't know why they do that no there's another one as well i don't know what it's called but if you've seen the one where it's like a spiral it's almost like someone's cut a symbol yeah from... we talked about that didn't we yeah so there are a lot of, and lot you can just crash symbols where they cut holes out yeah yeah you know they're the classic. But have you got any inclination to get any effects? No, not really. Do you know what I think it also is? You know when we were talking to Mel from BDC about like, you know, he was trying to, BDC are trying to become iconic. You know, they want to be looked at as people look at Zildjian and go, oh, I know that's a drum thing. I almost think like some of those symbols, they need more people playing them that are well-known drummers. Like, just imagine if every pop drummer for, like, a pop artist had a China symbol. Like, it might become more common. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like yeah, they're but sort a lot of... Yeah, metal me have China, though, don't they? Yeah, the, the metal people. But it's, it's it's just not a sound you frequently mm. want to no, use. No, That's the thing. So it's, it's niche. It is niche. It's niche things, but fundamentally, hi-hat, crash and ride, isn't it? Yeah. That's your meat and potato. It is. I think I'm trying to world. say, I wonder if there'll be like a symbol that will, that is niche and it'll start getting used more. Do you think they're just bored? Who, the people uh, that use them? No, the people who make them. <laughs> Maybe. I, like, oh, we've, I mean, yeah. we could do another crash. Well, the sure. big bell thing, surely that's bought, like, they're probably high when they made that up. You know what <laughs> I mean? <laughs> just like, what about if it's all bell? Yeah, let's have a little bit of herb and then uh, <laughs> yeah. go, right, let's come up with some weird symbols. Honestly, probably, you know, someone's playing the ride bell and goes, oh, I wish we could get more. Like, why don't we just wait the one that's all bell? It's like, <laughs> well, we could. We are Zildjian, you know? Yeah, maybe. It's a bit of that. bit of boredom. I, I wonder what symbols have come out and then gone under the radar, if any. You know, like, like when McDonald's bring out something mental, like the Spam and Oreo sandwich and no one hears about it because it's so awful yeah that did happen and uh i wonder if there's been symbols that are sort of they're like here we go because what was that april fool's thing you saw last year and it was like what was it this year do you remember that oh yeah must have been this year it was some kind of oh it was uh hi-hats made from two chinas yeah (laughs) yeah that was it and i went yeah I wonder if there's other, been other things that have come out and then Probably people has. are like, what? You know, I could I could research that. Failed symbols. Mm. Or just anyone else, what, you know, any listeners? Do you own any, any weird kind stuff? of FX yeah. special symbols? Do you yeah. use them? Yeah. So what are they? And yeah. are there any we haven't listed? What's out there? Yeah, so you've been shopping. Yeah, I've been shopping, boy. Shopping. I what? um, I got. Well, we reskin are. We're, your kit, innit? we're gonna reskin the kit. You and I, me and you. Um. Yeah, you you 
put a whole new set of skins for your kid. Whole new set of skins. Uh, Tell me why. Well, well, dead sounding drums, basically. Dead sounding drums. Dead sounding drums. Skins need replacing. Skins need replacing. And uh, 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 because I was going to ask at your joiners gig that I might may or may not be coming to, (laughs) uh, are you using your kit? Yeah, that's low key why I'm doing it. You know, two hundred bunts. To top and get bottom. Heads. Top and bottom. And that's the thing as well, because I feel like last time I reskinned it, I didn't get new bottom heads. And I don't know when I last changed the bottom heads. And I'm like, I just want, want it all new, baby. All new skins. And I know as soon as you change them, I'll be like, fucking hell. Why did I wait that yep. long? You know? And the answer um, is, because I can't afford it. Yeah, is that, well, that's it. You know, it is expensive. Because that's 200 pounds. So that's basically snare top and bottom. Yep. Uh, rack tom. Yep. Top and bottom. Yep. It's one rack tom, isn't it? Yep. Floor tom, rack top and bottom. Yep. And the bat head on the kick. Yep. 200 quid. 200 quid. Cheers. Yeah. And it's uh, like... Now, something I noticed, well, you're doing the little trick that I was taught. Mm. You've, gone, you've gone Evans, isn't it? Yeah, I've gone Evans. Yeah, we're, we're sort of Evans boys. Um, apart from my snare. Mm. Um, G2s. Yeah. Clear. Mm-hmm. And the little trick is, G2s top and bottom on the toms. Exactly. That's a little trick, because you get, get a bit of two-ply on the bottom. Yeah. Single. And I was told, or advised, that just helps you can keep a little bit of control mm. of the of the drum. Yeah. Um, but one thing I noticed as well, snare bottom skin. This is the one that gets overlooked the most. I think. Oh my god, yeah. I don't yeah. know when I've last changed this one. Yeah. And there's a dent in it, and it really annoys me. And I know exactly how it got there, and I'm like, <laughs> can't wait to get rid of that. Yeah, it does get overlooked, and I didn't even know what to shop for. Do you know what I mean? Because I bought it online as well, and I've never bought drum skins online. I always go in the shop and look, and I go, well, I haven't tried this one before, but. The snare top, I just went for generic Evans. I think it was just like an Evans G2. It wasn't like Evans dry, crisp sound or whatever, you yeah. know, or one with holes HD in it. dry. Yeah. yeah. It was just like generic snare. And then for basic the bottom... Basic skin for a basic man. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the bottom, it was like the Hazy 500. Yeah. And, and I was like, I don't know what that means. You know what I mean? Yeah. I barely know what Hazy means. And <laughs> why is there 500 of them? And then, <laughs> but, it's but then it was like, it? <laughs> it's more than 400. <laughs> so, <laughs> what, what are you doing? Where'd you get that from? This is my guitar. This is my guitar. Why have you got a guitar out while I'm talking about Why the Why not? Well, it's just mental. Yeah, I'm pumped now. I'm feeling yeah. Buzz you know, you know, I'm not hundred percent with it. That felt like I was, I'd blacked out and come to go get the guitar. Well, that's not a chord. It's sort of it's sort of a G, but you don't need both fingers down at the bottom. Just one. It just adds a bit, of, adds a little bit of spice to it. Yeah, you've gone with the uh, Green Day "Good Riddance" G chord there. What were we talking about? Hazy five hundred. Hazy five hundred. So it's the Hazy five hundred or the Hazy two hundred. I was like, what's the difference? And uh, five hundred basically said you'll get. It's for like rock bands and uh, if you hit it hard or whatever. And then the 200 was like, if you like jazz and want the sensitivity and enjoy playing with brushes and stuff, I'm like, get the 500 yeah. in the car, you know? Um, but yeah, I'm excited. You, well, like, go I on. think I need to correct you there. Oh, go on. Because you didn't actually get the hazy. <laughs> did I not? What did I get? No, because I have the hazy. What, what did because I whenever get? I've gone to Graham Russell and they're like, bottom snare skin they're like oh you've got to get the the hazy 500 oh no i didn't you've got, I got the glass i got the glass and yeah. i said oh i've never used the glass yeah i'm a hazy boy <clears throat> and you said oh the glass said it's suited to big rock big yeah so you've gone glass i've gone glass why is it named glass that's why that know. film what film glass there's a film called glass oh yeah <laughs> i've seen unbreakable nope seen split no, nope. no, nope. cool. Nope. Don't worry about it. That's I did nice watch trilogy. Back to the Future the other day, though. So, oh, okay, we'll get. Have you that. heard there might be a, another one coming out? No, there shouldn't be. Yeah, not mental. He's got <laughs> especially with old shit. Like, he's never going to stand on the other board. Come on, give a break. It's just cruel at this point <laughs> to wheel him out again for another film. 
<laughs> uh, no going back in time for you, Michael. No, exactly. This disease um, is permanent. Um, so yeah, we're we on get Thursday, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm excited. I am excited because it, it's. It, do you know what? It almost. It. Well, it almost feels like a cleanse in terms of to tie it back to cleaning out. You know, when you clean out your room yeah. and you go, "Oh, look at this. It's it's better now. I can. It's restarting, regenerative. Uh-huh. Uh, it's like that. You're like, oh, this is this is good. Back to normal, and um, yeah, should be great. Should be. Yeah. I mean, you'll see. So you're coming down to see the drum doctor. Coming down, see the drum doctor. Yeah. Mm. I love it. I love reskinning kits. I know. Well, it is, yeah. It's just a nice, fun thing to do, isn't it? Yeah. It feels like it's investment. And it kind of, well, it is an investment. You know, it's like it's 200 quid, but you sound better as a drummer. And what was that thing you said? Drum, The drums are 70% of your sound? Skins. Skins, yeah. yeah. So it's like. So they're very important. Very yeah. important. And as we've said, often overlooked, you know, it's like, I'm going to get You've this sweet for new the, uh, symbol. EMAD 2 on the kick as well. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Classic. Yeah, it's just great. Thing is, I don't even know if the kick drum needs replacing because it just always sounds good. But um, but I thought, why not? You know what I mean? Just get it. Get them all done. And then you got a spare. Then I got a spare. Yeah. I had another funny phone call at work oh yeah yeah shoot so i had another phone call maybe this will be a regular feature <laughs> i think it should be yeah a segment so i have the phone system set up now at work so it comes through to my mobile mm. like through an app and so it's yesterday morning and and the phone rang i was like hello the old blacksmith and it was this woman and she was like oh is this the old blacksmith studio i said yeah she said oh um i'm hoping you can help um i'm a singer okay mm. I used to sing in bands. And she's like, I've written a Christmas song. Right. And I want to record it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then she started going off on a man about, she's got a friend who's like helped her produce music before. Right. But now he's like a businessman and doesn't have much time. Right. And she's like, oh, and I've been down the radio station and they really like it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, so have you... I was, I was like, okay, well, what is it you're looking to record? And she's like, well, it's, it's a Christmas song and I'm I'm a singer. I was like, okay, do you play yeah, guitar? That. Yeah. <laughs> do you play guitar or do you play piano? No. Okay. So what's the music? Well, it's a Christmas song. Now I, <laughs> now I know. I'm a but... singer. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay. So I was like, have you written any music? Yeah. No. I, I just sing the song. Like, yeah. And so, so this... I said, so when you went to the radio station, yeah. did, you, did you play them something? She said, yeah. I said, okay, well, what did you play them? Oh, well, I recorded it with my friend. Okay. Yeah. So when you were with your friend and you <laughs> recorded, did you record yourself singing? Yeah. Did he put any music to it? No. Okay. Did he record any instruments? Yeah. Okay. Right. What instrument was recorded a bell <laughs> okay um cool amazing just thinking like i don't then she started telling me about her age and that she nearly had a song in Woolworths. <laughs> i mean it's like how okay. long ago was that <laughs> <laughs> it's like she's like oh my grandkids love the song okay i'm sure they do She's getting like, older with each sentence. She, well, she told me her age. She's 67. Right, okay. And she seemed lovely, but slightly unhinged. Mm. And this is classic. For for most a lot of people in music, I think, they come up with something and they get very excited. Yeah. And they're like, I want to record and release this song. But they don't, through naivety or just excitement, they don't understand how long and maybe pricey the process is yeah. to even get close to having something that you can actually play to people. Mm. And it's that thing I said to her, like, well, if your friend does all the music and does it all at home and all you want us to do is record the vocals, it will roughly take this long because mm. she wanted a price. Yeah. She was like, okay, I'll tell him that amount. I said, okay, but I said, but if we need to do the music and maybe help write it and play on it, you're gonna you you're looking at a very different ball game. She's like, okay, I'll tell him it's this price. I was like, 
That's just for recording vocal, just yeah. to clarify. Yeah. Also, it is the middle of November. That's what I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> you haven't got long. And it's like just that impulse of like, oh, I've written this Christmas song. And I said to her, oh, have you... So that recording you did... Because why are you going to the radio station with just something I, you've recorded? Well, the main question I feel that like everyone music. has is, which radio station yeah. was it? I mean, it's got to be Express FM. Isn't yeah, it? Isn't it? yeah, yeah. It's she's not Radio not, she's One. She's down six music. Yeah, she's not chatting with Greg James. Listen to yeah. this. And he's going, oh, this is great. It's a, yeah. just a vocal with a bell. <laughs> and the bell, <laughs> is it like constant? It's a like, don't bell. fear I the don't, reaper, yeah. the cowbell? <laughs> but it's like, okay, I mean, that's quite... I think that's slightly unhinged to go to the radio. To, in person. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. In person. Also, what did she play it from? Did she bring, like, a CD player? Well, this player is what I said. And... I said, so that recording, I was like, how did you... I was like, can you email that to me? Yeah. She said, oh, I've got... She said, well, we did it onto a CD. I was like, okay. She said, but then I put the CD in my car and it didn't work. <laughs> okay. And it's at that point you're like... Yeah. There's so much to unpack with that. Yeah. We are, so often we have to decipher what what people actually want. Yeah. Like what do you what do you want? And it's te- kind of tempering expectations. Yeah. In reality and it's like if you if you want to and and also as well it's like if you want to do it properly mm. we can help. Mm. But we're going to have to sort of educate you on how you do it properly. Yeah. But it's when people come in with that sort of hot-headed buzz yeah and they're not listening yeah they're not or they're not asking questions like okay i've written this song and i'd really like to record it yeah. how how do i do that yeah when they're like no this is what i want to do and you're like okay yeah i don't think you've really thought it through but it's like uh i think the conversation was like 10 minutes long yeah i was trying to not it does it seem up. like more questions were i don't know brought up for you like if i i've uh, i've still have questions like yeah yeah. What did what I what did she play? How did she play it to them at the radio? Like, did you, what? Yeah. Okay, let's let's just. How hone did you in record on... the vocal? And but there's no music. <clears throat> yeah. What? Why is music not? A, but I I think I asked her three times. Like, so what's the music? Yeah. Like, have you? And she's like, and did she couldn't or didn't answer? Yeah. I was just trying to work out. Like, did did anyone play a guitar? Well, you maybe know? in the kindest way, she didn't know what you meant by what's the music? Do you know what I mean? Maybe yeah. she was just like... But I said, you know, then it was like, okay, she's not getting it. Like, are there any instruments? Have you mm. And I think basically she's just sang it. Yeah. She's just sung it and there's no music. There's no instrumentation. There's nothing. Yeah. She's just written a melody with some lyrics and she now wants to record it. But she yeah. just didn't seem to grasp the concept that you needed to actually create the music. Like, yeah. There needs to be music. You can't just sing. Yeah. That's no, I, 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 I have to hone in on the radio thing because let's say, for argument's sake, it's Express FM in Portsmouth. She goes in. Yeah. First of all, right, so many questions. <laughs> does she know anyone there or does she I'm, just walk in? I'm going to assume not. Let's assume she doesn't know anyone there. So she's walked in. She's Googled radio stations in the area. Oh, here's one. Um, and it's next to a big... There's a big store. I don't know what it is. DFS or something. I don't know. Anyway, that's not important. But she goes there. She goes, right. With reception first, maybe. I Hi. Imagine. Yeah, I imagine. Hi. She walks in, goes I've, got a, I've got a song. Can you hear? You know, what yeah. does a receptionist do? Receptionist is probably at this point in your position. Where like, what do you want? Who are you? You know, has she, does she have it on a CD? Obviously, I think a CD. she did it on a CD. But then... But then what, let's say for so so many things is going to be like for argument's sake. She gets I past reception. they just humid her. They just yeah, humid her. But like she gets past reception. She goes to a room. You know, they're not on till later in the day. They've got a bit of dead time. They're planning the show for the evening. They're like, okay, what have you got? And they're like, here's the CD. They play it. Let's say on a computer. And then what, she's just stood there while there's some DJs listening to it. And then they just all sit and listen like i don't know yeah, and i'm not just, slagging her off i'm just intrigued i want to know more about i went to a radio yeah station. i think it's um sometimes with this stuff it's even with stuff like we get get those mad requests with mm. weddings it's like i'd love to just sit you down afterwards and go 
what were you actually thinking? Mm. Like, what what were you thinking yeah. to lead you to that point to ask yeah. the question or to phone the blacksmiths or to email mm. the agent? And what did you really expect to happen? Yeah. Like, let's let's analyze post match. Let's let's do a yeah. post game analysis. Just go. <laughs> let's let's do a bit of Monday night football and just go. Okay. Well, what 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 were you expecting here? Yeah. What was going through your head that you thought this was okay or that this was a good? Because they don't think. And no. that's the problem. Well, there you go. That was drum and drummer. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I'll let you know if there's any more weird... It's just, no, it is true. It's, yeah, it's... Even, like, when I played in bands before, and this is sort of the same thing, and playing a wedding band, and this is pre-tailored, played a wedding once, and they asked for a whole new set, which wasn't our set, I know this isn't the same thing, but it's that it was just like, you know, this isn't what we do. And it was just, I remember just trying to talk with them and they just didn't get it. They were like, yeah, but why can't you play this song and that song? I'm like, because no one will dance to it. Do you know what I mean? They want a candy shop by 50 cent. I was like, it's going to be old people there. And I think it is, it's that difference between like, I don't know, because you don't want to be too harsh as well. Like you as a, you know. Studio. Yeah, I don't want to just kill our dreams straight away. No. You know, we want to help people and like, mm. I just want to hear the song. Yeah. If it's, because it's either going to be for good. Yeah. Like, okay, she's actually yeah written something that's quite decent. Now she needs help turning it into a full song. Yeah. And we'll explain how that happens and what the process is and how to go about that. Or it's fucking abysmal. <laughs> In which case it's like, no, you yeah. just can't can't do it yeah and i'm split on which one i want it to be yeah because i want it to be fucking abysmal and i can just be like listen to this this is insane yeah but if it's good come on in and we'll 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 help but yeah so i'll let you know if anything happens with this woman but hazard of the job yeah As this we is said, it well it tracks nutters and weirdos it- it does. And it's, I had a drum student once that was a bit like that, where it, the same thing as like, for a bit, I was like, yeah, I'll take your money. And then instantly I was like, no. So, <laughs> you no, know, there was, he came, he came to me, he was like, oh, mate, yeah, I used to have drum lessons in Portsmouth for someone else. But he, uh, what he said to me was, he was like, but he ran out of space. So he couldn't. Yeah, that's bullshit. Yeah, exactly. So he couldn't give me lessons anymore. And so we did our first lesson and he was like trying to run the lesson. He was like, oh, here's this Led Zeppelin song I've learned. Listen to this, listen to this. He was, by the way, he was like in his 40s. He was a builder. He used to come in his high vis. I don't even remember him. He was like, he had lessons for a, a month or so. But yeah, he, he was just a nightmare to teach. I'd be like, okay, well, let's, we can work on this beat if you want. And then he just start, fresh. it was literally like teaching a child. I was like, right, stop a sec. Okay. Like, you know. And, um, yeah. And I think what happened was he was meant to do an hour one day and he just canceled like five minutes before. And I was like, this guy is going to be trouble. And then he told me what days he couldn't do. And then I told him, oh, I can only do, say he was like, I can't do Tuesdays. I was like, all I got now is Tuesday at three. He was like, oh, I can't do that. I'll have to let you know in the future. And then that was it. And I was just, he's probably gone to every drum teacher in Portsmouth and just, like, yeah, he's busy as well. What's this going on? But it was that thing of like, it wasn't even worth it to take his money because it was just like a nightmare, a nightmare yeah. to work with. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, one last thing. Uh, a track I play drums on has just come oh. out. Um, Jack Child is an artist that Neil's been working with. He basically recorded loads of stuff at home. Neil's been helping produce and mix it. They got the big man in to play some drums on a few tunes. And... The first track called Boyfriend's House is out on Spotify. We'll put a link in. It's yeah. a good little tune. It's quite, you'll quite like it, I think. It's quite Arctic Monkeys. Well, probably. Question. Does he have to change his name when he grows up? Yes, he'll, he, when the second album comes out, it'll be Jack Man. Good. <laughs> I used to have a head teacher called Mr. Young, who was quite a young man, and I said to my mum once, I was like, when he's older, is he still allowed to be called Mr. Young? She's like, yeah, it doesn't change. Blew my mind, an old man being called <laughs> Mr. Young. Um, but yeah, well, I'll put that on the Insta as well. Yeah, that's a good little Post tune. Just a little clip. He's very talented. He's only like 16, 17. 
Well, yeah, Jack very Charles. Very talented. And uh, got to play drums on a few songs and one of that. It's really good. Nice. So Good enjoy. for you. Good for yeah. you. Yeah. I kind of forgot I did it, to be honest. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, Jack's song's out. Okay, cool. Yeah. He didn't tag us in anything, but it's fine, isn't it? Yeah. Learned Archie credit, didn't yeah. tag me. Yeah. No. Credit your <laughs> contributors, please. It helps. <laughs> right, so we have been is, talking. Is I'll, I'll post about it and I'll tag him. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you are the best. Yeah. Yes, I Right. Am. Thank you. We've been talking for a while. Yes, yeah. I'll cut a lot of that out. Rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> All rubbish. Um, Instagram, Twitter, fa- uh, not Facebook, email. <laughs> Fucking hell. Uh, go no, buy some old second-hand shit. The lack of zest in your promotion, Instagram, Twitter. Not even listing not even what they are anymore. Yeah. Just saying the words. Just saying words. Instagram, yeah. Twitter. Facebook. Give us, I mean, five stars, but not for that one. If you're going to review us for other ones, I bet. <laughs> Are we getting worse? <laughs> Probably. I think it, it, it doesn't help that we're not really doing anything. No. Wise. No. Um, but there's a World Cup coming up. Yeah. So, and Christmas. And yeah. And your gig. Drum tuning. Talk drum about tuning. drum tuning. Um, we'll, f- we'll find something. Yeah, yeah. We'll root <laughs> around. Scrape the barrel. Do you know what I mean? Even Line of Duty had its week episodes. So. Yeah. And it had a very weak ending. All of them going up in a lift. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Just at the pub. All right, mate. All right, mate. Yeah. Just said. Oh, there's, there's still time to go and see her if you want. You could go to Liverpool. Now she's not from Liverpool. She's like you could go and see that and see that girl whose partner husband's died. Dead. Yeah, husband's dead. So you get stuck. In, and your like rat up a drain yeah. <laughs> He was immediately in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I'll see you Thursday, innit? Yeah, I can't wait. Day Buzzing. of the release of this. Yeah, I was going to say, I'll see you today. Yeah. Nice. Nice one, mate. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Drum and Drummer. You can find us on Instagram at Drum and Drummer Podcast. And you can send us an email to drumandrummerpod at gmail.com. Remember, just pick up the sticks and twerk.